Hamptons. My name is Art Vandelay, and uh, today I'm joined by my co-host Snoopy and Prickly Pete. <laughs> if, I, if either of you guys get that reference, I'll give you a high five. I was going to go uh, with Bob Sacamano, but that works too. Bob Sacamano, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no high five for me. <laughs> yeah, no, no Aww. big autistic thumbs up for you. Nope. These are these are these are Seinfeld <laughs> references. Come on, son, get with it. <laughs> Fucking greatest show of all time. Um, it it, it might just be. You know, I, I heard uh, somebody was telling me that King of Queens is actually really funny, and I tried to give that a watch last night. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> think it was that great. <laughs> What's his name is pretty good. Jerry Stiller is good because he yells. You know the dad. Serenity now, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the so. airing of grievances. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rest of us for the rest of us. <laughs> because I got a lot of problems with you people, and you're gonna hear about it. <laughs> and the feats of strength. Oh my God, brilliant. Yeah, he's got to uh, wrestle. George has to wrestle his dad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, anyways, um, uh, did you guys do anything cool over the weekend, or uh, since we last talked? What's going on with you dudes? I'd like to hear from you. Uh, just uh, go ahead, Fred. No, nah, you the new and probably more exciting than me. <laughs> yeah, new and improved Fred. I gotta had to turn him <laughs> down. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, uh, Fred. Yeah, not a not a ton. I visited a friend and uh, he's selling part of his collection, so I grabbed a few things from him. And uh, then the weekend we didn't do a ton, mostly stuff around the house. To what you grab from your buddy's collection? Um, the the Funerarium album that I posted earlier. Oh, um, nice. That, that's weird. Our uh, old band member just posted that album too. I guess he was listening to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wonder if he follows um, you. Yeah, I think he might follow you. I, I'm not sure. I got uh, the Pest Noir Lorraine rehearsal LP. Oh, um, is that that haul you posted? Yeah, oh, that's okay. basically all that. Yeah, and uh, I was talking to you guys about Death Witch earlier. There was a a Death Witch album in there. I have uh, five of the six albums, and I still think it's a massively underrated band. They're awesome. I listened to them for for like a minute just to see what what they sounded like because I like that album cover with the fucking walk nut on it. Yeah, that's one of my favorite album covers ever. It's just, there's everything going on in there. Yeah, ju just judging for, like, the, the quick second, that like, quick minute that I uh, was listening to it, it, it sounded a lot like uh, black and roll kind of stuff, like uh, uh, Bewitched or something. It's very straightforward black thrash. And, um, he, like, you know that Swedish band Witchery? Imagine, yes. imagine them, but with balls. Okay, because I know there's like one witchery album that a lot of people like, but aren't they like a Christian band or something? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I I heard that. I know which uh, album you're talking about. It looks kind of like um, looks kind of like the Sacramento cover, right? Like really blue, but there's like a big uh, Grim Reaper on it or something. I mean, the Reaper is on most of their covers. That's kind of their their mascot. But I, I believe yeah. it's the first one. Then I, yeah, I didn't know that. I, I'm only familiar with the one album. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I don't mind them, but they're a bit there's a bit too much melody in there for me. Too much melody. Okay. What about you, Paulus? What'd you get up to? Uh, just swam in a pool and then watch Mad God. Mad God is really fun. Oh, I actually went to a, a record store in. Um, Ooh. What was it called? Pomona. Yeah, about Pomona it was um oh Montclair. Uh, oh, okay. Called Rhino Records, and I wasn't really looking at the music too much. It, it was just kind of, you know, run of the mill metal albums. But um, they had some interesting movies, so I just picked up um, the Mad God one. I heard some good things about it. And then um, I think I got um, Paranoia Agent. Uh, some oh, that's anime. That, I, I, yeah, I think I told you about that one, right? Yeah, so I picked that up. Par Paranoia Agent is good. It's the same guy who does the music for. Um, that paprika 
movie. Yeah, that's the same director, Pap- yeah, Paprika right, right. and Perfect mm-hmm. Blue. Yeah, I, I, I tried to watch Perfect Blue. I, I don't know why I, I couldn't get through it. I might have to try it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mad God. Uh, you know what that is, Fred? Yeah, I watched... I watched Damn, Freddy Love. I think it was Shudder. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a Shudder Shutter original. Special. Yeah. It, uh, I, I liked it. it. I think it went a bit too long. Oh, it did. Uh, yeah, it did. <laughs> but the... Uh, After the doctor the, scene, it could have ended... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that but it kind of, kind of remind me a bit of uh, of Begotten, just in terms of it being a series of obscure, uh, bizarre images. Yeah, it, it is like Begotten a lot. I, I think I told Paul. Uh, yeah, say years the story. Ago. Yeah, the story. <laughs> sorry, so many stories, ridiculous <laughs> stories. But uh, me and me and my me and two friends of mine, we went to to a screening of uh, Begotten, and we get oh, there, nice. and. Uh, Elijah Wood is there. <laughs> oh, cool. He's just there. And uh, he walked by us, and he's like, excuse me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and Trevor, he goes, hey, get a load of Frodo over there. I was like, oh, yeah, Elijah Wood, you see him? He goes, oh, wait, that was really him? Because I thought he just looked like him. I was like, nah, dude, that's fucking him. I guess he was uh, the one putting on the whole production. Like, of, uh, He's the one that like did the whole screening of Begotten. Cool. I'd, I'd love to see that in theaters. Yeah, but that, that's it. I saw Elijah Wood at the Begotten screening. That's uh, the whole gist <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, dude, Mad God. Remember I was telling you guys um, that I like had an ear infection or I thought I had an ear infection or something like that? Yeah. The the night that like it really started to get to me and I was like, oh, man, I think I need to go to the doctor. Like It's just concerning me. I'm like, I'll relax and watch a movie. So I watched Mad God and it kind of put me in a weird state of mind where I'm like super paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I, I think that kind of adds to it. Yeah, I was reading up on that guy. Apparently, he's been making that since like the nineties. Yeah, and then, it's like a thirty-year uh, thing in you know production. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool with like the multimedia aspect of it, where it was like live actors over that claymation set and shit too. And then um, what was it called or that like stop motion claymation shit? And um, yeah, I guess he was doing shit for. Uh, like George Lucas for like Star Wars and I guess I think one... he got fired from uh, the Jurassic Park set yeah cause they were like yeah. moving on to CGI but apparently right, right. Uh, Spielberg kept him on cause they wanted like that lifelike um, um, you know aspect to, to the, yeah. the dinosaurs and shit cause I guess that yeah, was yeah. like sort of the first time they are trying to do like CGI shit and, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure when they first started doing that. I, I know he was um, still kind of part of it, but he wasn't really ahead. And he wasn't in charge of the, um, I forget what you call that, practical effects or whatever. Yeah, but he was, maybe, uh, go ahead. Maybe they fired him because he kept spending all his time on Mad God. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's the weird thing. It's like a, <laughs> it's, it's a 30-year production, and I'm sure they didn't work on it for the entire 30 years. It's like... I'm sure there was, like, big, long gaps. Probably, like, a 10-year gap or something. Yeah, it was. It was, like, through 90s he was working on it, and then he took, like, a huge break. And then um, I guess he got a Kickstarter, and um, he eventually finished the film. And I guess a year before it was released, he, like, had a mental breakdown and got admitted to a psych ward. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's nice. Yeah, so a little lore. (laughs) But uh, yeah, good good movie. Just ran a little too long, but uh, other than that, it was uh, pretty sick. Yeah, as far as like, um, cause I, I really like the uh, what do you even call that stop stop motion animation? Yeah, it, yeah. it's cool, you know. And we were kind of talking shit a couple weeks ago about uh, Wes Anderson, but uh, he had a really good stop motion movie. Yeah, the, Fantastic, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. That was excellent. Yeah, that, that one. Great. That one's really sick. Yeah, they got all the chicken runs and. Uh, yeah, Chicken Shit, Run that, was funny. I saw that for the Wallace first time, Gromit. like, not that long ago. Waltz and Gromit is awesome. Yeah. Waltz and Gromit is hilarious. I watched that, like, maybe a year ago just to kind of refresh my mind. Fucking great. Yeah. Funny shit. He has I used to live in Britain, Britain and it was, uh, washed it all the time over there. What's that? I used to live in Britain, and I watched it all the time when I was over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. saw it right from the source. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Right from yeah, the tea. From the, yeah, right from the tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
All right, so uh, what are we sucking tonight, uh, Fred? <laughs> what what's what? our what are we listening to? <laughs> what are we <laughs> sucking tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Whose teats are we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you phrase it that way. <laughs> we are diving into the album Maze of Doom by the Russian band Great Sorrow. And this was your pick, so it was my pick. Let's uh, let's hear the. Paul, you mind if I get into uh, something right before we jump in? I didn't get to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's always next episode. Oh, no, I'm just come kidding. On. <laughs> on. To... Okay, yeah, it's just a couple more minutes. I wanted to bring up Lucky, uh, Harry. What's his name? Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. Do you ever, you know this guy, Fred Harry Dean Stanton? No. He was the guy in Alien. The first alien movie who gets killed like first and the cat's watching do with the cat okay yeah 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 i think he was the dad in uh, pretty in pink and um some other fucking movies but anyways uh yeah lucky 2017 it's just a movie about old people and it's awesome i love movies about old people i remember my grandfather told me that too and i thought about it and i'm like you know what i really do like uh these kinds of movies <laughs> And that kind of made me think of um, the another movie that I saw with him that's like somewhat related to this. Uh, it's called The Straight Story. Have you guys ever heard of that? No. No. Norm MacDonald uh, apparently liked this movie. So it's kind of weird. It's like, uh, it's a Disney movie, but it's directed by David Lynch. <gasps> and <laughs> it's about a guy who who's traveling on a lawnmower with a little trailer on the back to go see his brother. And then it turns out his brother is fucking uh, Harry Dean Stanton. Are you guys there? I think we cut out or something. No, I hear no, you. Here. Just, oh, okay. I just muted. Yeah. Yo, okay. That's what that noise is. I, I keep thinking like... What yeah, it's that me. Noise? Oh, yeah, that yeah, sounds so interesting. Kind of, yeah, kind of a, a, a correlation there between Harry and David Lynch and uh, that kind of shit. Yeah, it's good stuff. I, re I would highly recommend it. Free on you. <laughs> Free on YouTube, huh? Oh, you're, uh, now you're cut out. Who, Dan? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, but I just can't hear you. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll pause. Alright, we're back. Uh, we lost Dan and his nips, but he's back. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> You still have all the uh, all that previous recording? Yeah. Okay, it was just me that got uh, lost there, right? Yep. All right, cool. So yeah, anyways, anyways, where yeah. did I leave you off? You said free on YouTube. Yeah, free on YouTube. Uh, what the hell else did I do? It's something else I was doing. Oh, uh, fucking Damien had a show. That was pretty okay. Everybody showed up. We saw all of our uh, acquaintances at the Wizards of Oz show. Oh yeah, I saw the uh, the pictures. I mean, pretty okay doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement. <laughs> well, I, I say that because I only got to see a little bit of the uh, Wizards of Oz set, and kind of the rest of the time uh, I was just like catching up with people out in the parking lot, <laughs> to be quite honest. But uh, but I had fun, and uh, Josh showed up looking large and in charge. Robert showed up, and um, yeah, I only got to catch like a little bit of the uh, wizard set. Yeah, I heard oh, they I was... went on pretty late, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they didn't go on till like one, and I was there from like I, I got there at like eight, and we were already pre-gaming at seven. So everyone, like me, and we were already all fucking burned out. <laughs> yeah, we saw I'd be uh, like Chris... right past out by that point. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we saw uh, Christian's brother there. He just uh, kind of walked up, and um, we were talking to the uh, drummer of Early Moods. Am I disconnected again? What's going on? No, no you're good. I just... Yeah, sorry. That keeps throwing me off. But, um, yeah, we were talking to the drummer of Early Moods, and then Jesse walks up, and he goes, Oh, hey, what's up, John Redcorn? <laughs> if you've seen fucking uh, Chris, he, he does look like a real Native American now. Yeah. <laughs> It was funny at that record store I went to this weekend. I actually saw their uh, album 
um, vinyl over there. So they got some yeah, outreach. Yeah. yeah, they they got a review on uh, Grizzly Buds, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And then we also saw, um, what was it? The uh, the the stand-up show where Robert thought it was uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but it was like the ants because he doesn't know anything. Oh, you guys actually went? We went. We went. <laughs> Yeah, Robert thought it was going to be stand-up by the chick who plays Sabrina, but it's like the aunt. Yeah, like, she looks yeah, exactly like like, like, the, like back then. Yeah, she looks the same. And I'm like, bro, we're going to go see this, whatever. And so he makes <laughs> he makes a prediction. He says this is going to be just vagina comedy, and it was. Uh, there was a few female comedians, and all of their sets were um, vagina, not even jokes, just talking about their vaginas. <laughs> and we go with Robert's co-worker, you know that guy Alfredo who was like spilling beer all over our uh Yeah floor? late singer vibes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was laughing his head off the entire time and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know who else was there too? That the black lady from uh Kirby Enthusiasm, the the chick who played a hooker and Larry like had her in the carpool lane. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I don't remember the actress, but I remember the episode. Yeah, and, they, and like they, they smoke weed at Larry's dad's house, and then he's like yelling at himself in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> surprisingly, I've never watched Kirby Enthusiasm. Oh man, it's excellent. So I've you heard. said Seinfeld's the best. Uh, I think Curb is, is is much better. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Jewy comedy. It, it's 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 very good. Larry. Oh man. Yeah, Larry's the best. Yeah, that shit's hilarious. One of the best. Uh, it's like comedy characters. In, in the past, I don't know, fucking 30 years or however long that show's been around. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get uh, all my bull crap out of the way. What is that, 20 minutes already? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, like Paul was saying, Fred, um, it's your pick. You know, what, what, who is this band? Can you introduce us and, uh, Why'd what you the pick heck them? is this? What the heck is this thing? <laughs> what are all of this? Yeah, um, what are these? <laughs> so, Great Sorrow, a uh, Russian band formed, I think, 1990. Um, started off as Death Doom, um, which is the album that we're listening to, the 93 album Maze of Doom, their debut. Um, and eventually they morphed into more of a uh, hard rock sort of deal. Um, no! I know. <laughs> they did, I heard a little bit of that stuff. I hope. I think they went uh, kind of the same route as uh, uh, NFMA from uh, from Britain, but uh, in any case, yeah, I picked Maze of Doom uh, because you know I was digging through early Russian death metal and uh, came across this one, the album cover. Um, whoever is listening, look it up. It looks like a demonic interpretation of a VHS company's logo and uh, yeah four pretty long tracks of death doom uh, with a bit of proggy uh, tendencies in spots but not uh, nothing obnoxious and uh, yeah I finally got my hands on it and uh, really enjoyed it I thought it deserved a bit more exposure so that's why that's why I picked this one. Right. Yeah, it, it was a pretty interesting release. The, the, like you said, the album cover reminded me of a few things. It reminded me of the um, Gamma Ray album cover for uh, No World Order. Oh, yeah. If you guys know that one. Yeah. I mean, th th there's like some similarities where it's like a big landscape. You got like some pyramids and like a big face in the sky. It, it, it seems like one of these... Um, it, it looks like a movie cover or something. <laughs> uh, to me, it doesn't look like a movie so much as the logo that appears before the movie starts. It's the production okay. company that's stuck in yeah, the 80s. I, I got you there. <laughs> but Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, so musically uh, and... Yeah, know. Yeah, to me, I hear a, a lot of the Peaceful 3. I think there's a lot of influence from Paradise Lost. Uh, Anathema and um, My Dying Bride, although it's not quite as gothic 
oh. as them. So I guess maybe a bit closer to decomposed. Uh, but it's it's those weird like proggy tendencies here and there that kind of piqued my interest mostly on this one. Yeah, I, I noticed that too. There, there, there's like, a, there, honestly, I think I heard maybe two parts that sounded um, sort of gothic, uh, with with kind of the, those like eighties, um, just like the eighties goth vocals. Yeah, the just like where vocals, they're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, or talking over the yeah. instrumentals. Yeah, yeah. The, the, for the most part, though, it didn't. It doesn't really. I, I mean, I guess I can say like, sure, you can hear the anathema and. Um, my Dying Bride and Paradise Lost and stuff. But at the same time, I feel like this thing is really kind of unique and like on its own as an outlier. Because to, to me, this kind of sounds more um, like thrashy, but very, very slowed down. And also so many of the chords are like um, like dissonant or like black metal chords. It, it's something, you, something like this you really don't hear very often in, in uh, Death Doom, especially to this extent, because they kind of like drag these songs on and on with some of those um, like dissonant chord parts. Yeah. Yeah, especially the last track. Uh, what was it called? Uh, the Last Shelter. Yeah. That one. And, and it's kind of cool too, because that one, the main riff for that one, uh, they foreshadowed that one right at the beginning of the album. The opening synth melody. Uh, is what winds up being the main riff of that last track. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was like, with these fucking little interludes, I think they come at the um, first song and then the third song. Like, are they foreshadowing something? But you confirmed it. Yeah, and you know what? I didn't really notice it until I listened to it more intently for uh, for today's discussion. Uh, but that opening melody... Da, na, na, na. That's the uh, that's the main riff of the last track, but they play it over and over again. But every time, like it, it, it like the the dissonance is different each time. Like it kind of when it goes up and it falls, like it uh, they kind of just like lays into it, yeah, differently each time. And then there's like eventually it comes to like the twin guitars doing it at the same time and shit. It's like yeah. Yeah, so that track, it's it's funny because they repeat that same riff so many times. But it's so good, though. Time, it's it's kind of different because they uh, they just play it differently each time. Yeah, and it's and it's so like uh, memorable, like all the leads on this shit. They're, yeah. they're simple, but just the way that they, you know, how many times they repeat it, um, how long the melodic phrase is, and then all those little changes on it, you know, you can still hear the first uh you know motif of it but when it comes back it's like a little bit different tweaked so you know they're not not boring at all like this was what 40 minute listen and 30 something minutes yeah yeah and it goes by like really quick it's not something that you're um you know struggling to get through especially with just four tracks yeah yeah i felt the same way too i felt it was a little bit almost too short or or I, I could have gone on longer. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, I it definitely gone doesn't overstay its welcome. Minutes. Yeah, definitely. What, what I found really interesting with this album, too, is like right at the start, it kind of throws me off, or it threw me off the first time I heard it because that, it starts with that synth melody, and you're like, okay, that's, you know, an introduction. Uh, and then it fades out, and this is a song I think we'll be playing later. Uh, it kind of fades out into like a drum beat and then kind of a, a proggy passage and you're thinking okay this is what the album's going to sound like but then that fades away too and just gives way to this crushing death doom from there and it, yeah. uh, it, it like I, I didn't expect it the first time hearing it I was like oh, this is going to be some uh, what did I 70s. just buy <laughs> yeah it's going to be some 70s weirdo shit and uh, uh, nope it just says nope screw that and uh, kind of veers hard into the uh, the death doom uh, and, and you do hear some of that proggy tendencies I think this is what the band developed into later I think what we're hearing there is what they wound up becoming but uh, I'm assuming that because I haven't heard the other albums but the uh, the last track 
uh, towards the end as well has like a lengthier kind of a bit more pink floydy section um before it before it completely ends and uh and, you know that kind of influence in there i actually enjoy so sort of if it overdoes it then i start to you know, tune out of it but if it's just uh, a hint of it kind of adds a bit of flavor to it which i thought was pretty cool yeah they don't it doesn't overstay its welcome and neither does uh you know the doom parts which was uh you know something that uh kind of wears me out a little bit but this one it was really interesting like every time they went around we were saying it changes a bit mm. and um to speak a little bit more about that intro it reminded me of like uh like held in and uh like that 70s electronic type shit even yeah. when it goes into that second um that oh, second Heldon? part yeah the one with the baby on it uh yeah yeah okay and then um Ooh, finally we talk about some old electronic here yeah and richard uh <laughs> pinhas the iceland from 1979 mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah i like that one too yeah the that's what i was listening to like some of that because i was like i feel like i've heard this shit before and yeah, you me, know me and you both secretly kind of like that stuff we don't really talk about it too much well we'll keep it on the low oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, Don't yeah. Don't let anyone find out. <laughs> <laughs> Old like, well, that's what Blood Incantation's doing now. They're like tangerine dreaming it up. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, these guys they do it really tastefully, and you know, it's not like just it. It's not like I don't think there's any really um like keyboards at all like throughout the album besides like maybe like the synths that are going on at the beginning. But other than that, like during that second instrumental pass, um, like intro on that first song they're like doing all that textured shit with their guitars yeah. and shit and they're like just doing like george's jungle type fucking uh beats <laughs> <George's> jungle <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's some primitive ass shit um yeah watch out for that tree dude <laughs> <laughs> but yeah then it fucking opens up with that uh that intro riff and then they they like go half time down and half time up and they're like consistently in that like mid range mid pace like doom and shit which is like really reflects what the drummer can do because he's not just keeping a the count you know he's like actually doing in fills and changing up the beat like every time it comes around too he has like a different fill that he'll do with the snare or you know do with the roll uh with the toms and shit really sick yeah and it, it kind of falls into what i've said a few times about russian death metal from the 90s that it it doesn't really fall into any identifiable category like they they kind of do their own thing and just go with it like it, it doesn't sound too much like other bands you know from around the world but uh, again there's there doesn't really seem to have been any consistent russian sound for death metal and this one kind of capitalizes on that. It's death doom, but it's done in in their own way. They didn't. Uh, they decide to take their idea and run with it, and it kind of winds up being its own little thing. Yeah. Well, Dan was uh, talking to me about this. Um, you know, when our first impressions uh, after you, you know, revealed that we we're going to be talking about this one, and he had some pretty pretty good takes on it that I was, you know no denying you know what he heard and shit when i started listening to it too if you want to talk about that yeah do tell yeah um so i guess the first what like one of the very first things that i noticed like during the first song um this is really thrashy even the even the doomy parts are thrashy a lot of the i think it's especially on the second song oh yeah that's my favorite one i think a lot of what's going on in this in, in in this whole thing is like tech thrash, but really, really slowed down. Hmm. Yeah, especially it, with those like just those riffs, like it sounds like he's pinching or doing like pinch harmonics on it, like every every note and shit, but I think it might might just be the tone. Yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of like just weird progginess of some of the stuff and it straight up does sound like like uh like kind of tech thrash deck death thrash kind of thing 
just really slow. So I, I did hear stuff like uh, Stone in there, and like I, again, Air Dash. I talk, and uh, Antidote. These are all finished for some reason. But uh, even something like Hell Witch, I feel like uh, kind of goes into it a little bit. Yeah. And I think it was also the second song where they do this kind of like. Um, violin. It sounds like a violin, which is where you turn the uh, volume down and it goes. Oh yeah. And that, like that riff, straight up sounded like something from the first uh, Time Ghoul demo, mm. which comes out like one year before this. Yeah. And I think they continue to do that on like a year after this. But yeah, I, I think that um, that that thrash has a lot to do with this thing. They they just kind of cemented in a totally totally different way maybe maybe that comes from like a peaceful kind of um influence kind of as a base mm -hmm. but i think these guys are mainly uh like thrash dudes or something that's that's a really interesting take on it i've never really thought about it that way and i, I don't yeah, disagree I mean, yeah, does that kind of make sense? Because I straight up hear just a lot of slow down uh, heck thrash kind of it's thing. Like, <laughs> it's like the riffs yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, like like there was all kinds of um, like thrash comparisons I was thinking of while listening to this. Like I, I said, Hell Witch. Um, Obviously, uh, Voivod, right? Yeah, 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 definitely Voivod with the way they chord things. Yeah, because um, that part you were talking about with, like, the time ghoulish, like, guitar technique, that was, like, mm -hmm. that's when it hit me, like, oh, this is, like, Voivod shit, because they're, like, doing dissonant, like, black metal chords over that. Um, yeah, they straight up are. There's a lot of that. There's there's even stuff that sounds like it could be on, um, like, a Satanic Warmaster album. Some of the chording. Not mm -hmm. the way it's played, but, but the actual chords that they use. Yeah, it's interesting, because... You know, there's bands that, you know, do death and thrash. The one that comes to mind is, uh, you know, Dream Death. And, uh, sure, sure, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, they sound... I was thinking of them as well. Um, yeah, they sound kind of. like, uh, you know, a mixture of Slayer and Doom, or like a Doom Slayer. I think and, they're uh, very, uh, yeah, I think they're very Hellhammer, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mixed with the Slayer thing. But, like... Yeah, Dream Death, that's a really good comparison, actually. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, with, with uh, you know, with them their fusion of thrash and doom is like the dynamics between the genres rather than like great sorrow where they're doing like slowed down thrash riffs like fusing the techniques rather than yeah, like yeah. genres that's, that's side why, to side yeah that's why it's so insane is because this is still straight up uh like death doom all the way but the death doom that they're doing is it, it feels like thrash has a lot to do with it, like more of the techie stuff I wrote down a couple things, and I, I really did try to not just pull things out of my ass, but things that actually do sound <laughs> like this. Um, like I said, Hell Witch, uh, Solstice, it, it kind of did remind me of the, the Solstice album. I forget what the name of it is. The the, the first one with the like dude covered in fucking yeah. snow or anthrax or whatever that is. That's just self-titled, I think. It, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, a band called Cryonic from... Uh, che Chechnya or Czech Republic whatever you want to call it if you guys okay. haven't heard that one that's actually a really good um, like tech thrash kind of album no, I don't think that I've heard it it's the album with like it looks like a lady's face as the rocks <laughs> yeah cryonic uh, I said death uh, death row a little bit of wa like a tiny bit of watchtower maybe Shaw also from Russia uh, maybe like Sadis and then also maybe like um, uh, Oblivion from Canada. So I, I really do hear a, a lot of that, uh, especially the second song. The second song seems to be the most experimental one. Yeah, I like that. That one's my favorite. That one's sick. Yeah, it, it was like the third, like, I think there's only four tracks on this, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the third one was the most uh, straightforward, like, death metal sounding one. Yeah. Dude, no, like halfway on the fourth track, like where they just like ditch all the doom shit and they just go like straight death metal for like two minutes. That, yeah, that right. part's yeah, fucking that's, sick. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That, that's the fourth track. Sounds like a, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that, I thought it was the third one. That one's sick. Um, I, another thing that uh, kind of 
this is kind of like irrelevant, but this album feels like it's totally an outlier, especially in 93, because I guess during this time, um, this is like right after the fucking, or, or no, it's the same time as Serenades from Anathema, and it's um, the same year as uh, Let Loose the Swans from My Dying Bride. Yeah, 93. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of contemporary with these bands in, in some way. But I, I feel like it it really is kind of an outlier. In like I would compare this to other bands just because they kind of have no place within the Death Doom scene. So like uh Castle, I would really compare them to, if you guys know who that is. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, the Castle Doctor. from the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that thing is really fucking excellent too, dude. I yeah, mean that's an awesome album. Yeah, because that one yeah, you showed me that, that one, one like really early on. That one's yeah, really good. Yeah, I, I was I was listening to that back in high school. I thought it was really cool because that one almost seems like it's it's influenced by like straight up Sabbath and like old rock and roll. Yeah, but it's just it's such an interesting fucking thing. It, it really doesn't fit in anywhere. Um, maybe the band Expulsion, uh, from Finland or no, sorry, from Sweden. Sweden. With their album Overflow. Uh, that one's a little bit more like kind of tiamat worship but it, you know as far as death doom goes there are always death doom bands that kind of uh people consider them death doom even though sometimes they don't really do it most of the time you know what i mean yeah who are yeah, some right. examples uh like them like rippy kulu like uh morthra if you guys know that band mm -mm. they have a demo called birth of damnation i think it's really cool but it, think, it, it's I like think disembowelment oh, too right because yeah yeah like yeah as, all, yeah you're right as much as you do death doom and funeral doom like the beginning of the album is just, like, just straight out blasting yeah 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 that that's what i mean by that this doesn't really have that but um that, well i think i was getting to that's why it reminds me of uh, expulsion because expulsion is isn't exactly doomy all the time and neither is uh some of these other bands like Morpho or Disembowelment or Ruby Blue and like Autopsy for that matter sometimes Autopsy gets lumped in with the uh, Death Doom scene as well and yeah. same, same yeah. with Asphyx but Asphyx has plenty of thrash beats and plenty of uh, all kinds of shit going on yeah yeah I'm not sure why it is that uh, some of these bands get lumped into being the genre of Death Doom with Funeral Doom bands I get it but with some of these old school bands uh feels like the slow parts are just kind of they're part of their repertoire rather than uh, their full identity yeah doom as a tool yeah um i guess i guess unholy hey, dan kind of kind of what's up um guys oh okay yeah righteous righteous yeah i don't know why i'm having uh audio issues today you're fine um anyways um i think yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's only like a couple more bands that I was thinking of that um, kind of don't fall into any scene within the Death Doom kind of genre. And uh, the other one I was just about to mention was Unholy from Finland. I don't really think they fit in with a whole lot of bands. What do you guys think about that, Unholy? Yeah, I always kind of yeah. lumped them in with Disembowelment just for they, being kind they, of outlier type shit. They've oh, always had their own thing going right, especially those first two albums. Like Ring of Power and um, From the Shadows are just yeah, the like Gray Blows, bizarre. like where he's like fucking screaming and shit. Oh, Gray yeah. Below, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wasn't there a song? Awesome. Wasn't there a song on there where he's like singing something really strange, like some really weird, um, like the repeating part? I can't remember what the name of the song was. Uh, oh, the trip was in for green. Isn't there like some strange thing on that? I gotta listen to it again, but I'm sure there is. <laughs> Knowing them, yeah, I, I remember. I remember listening to that like chanting part. I could have swore it was that that song. Oh, and also, uh, Sempaternal Death Rain. Oh know, yeah, that's yeah. like kind of early. Yeah, they're, yeah, del they're like delirium. Del like a lot of the Dutch scenes. Yeah, 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 delirium. dude. I wrote that too. I wrote delirium, maybe. Zazu. Delirium, <laughs> necroschisma, like all, all of those. I think would factor in here. I had never actually heard Necroschisma. 
before. What? You, uh, nope, never heard of him. Damn, Fred. I've, I've heard of people talk about him, but not for that long. <laughs> Only maybe for like a year or two. But yeah, I finally checked him out. Dude, judging by the name Necro Schisma, I expected something like Black Dashy Necrovore. Not really uh, what it is. But no, that's kind of cool. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, I, t I totally didn't expect uh, this, this, like, dirty Doom fucking demo kind of thing. Yeah, I gotta check them out, too. <laughs> just the, like, just, just the very hammer drive through mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're, it sounds like you're moshing in mud. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Angel said that about uh, Acid Orgy from Goat Lord. So it sounds like you're mo acid gonna mosh in some mud, orgy. huh? Orgy. Yeah. <clears throat> Those fucking like uh, electronic drum kit things. Yeah. Chicken dance. <laughs> yeah, chicken dance. What With or without the clucking. Yeah. <laughs> the underground church. Light the candelabra. I've always liked. Um, but is it just the fog? Or black yeah, fog. Yeah, the fog was good too. Yeah. Oh, I love that track. But I was uh, I was poking around the uh, the members of Great Sorrow at the time of the first album to see if there was any connection to any other bands. Uh, uh, there isn't a ton. One of the members uh, was in a, a Russian death metal band called Bestial Deform back in '92. But it doesn't sound like he actually recorded anything with them because the uh, the '92 demo they uh, put out had a different uh, didn't have that guy on it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I really don't see a whole lot of connection to any other bands with them. Like, it's, uh, it really feels like it was conceived in a void. It really does. It, that, that's why I say it's kind of an outlier, along with um, some of those other bands I just mentioned. Um, there was one more that this kind of reminded me of that comes out a year before. I'm sure you know who they are. You know who Babylon Sad is? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say, too. Really? Yeah. Okay, so we did make a lot of kind of the same connections without really uh, talking about it. Yeah, Curie. I, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They only had the one album. The, the If I had to pick one album, though, that uh, I kind of feel is a bit analogous to this, it's actually Catatonia's Dance of December Souls because I feel like that album doesn't really fit into a whole lot of um, pigeonholes. Like it, it, it was massively influential in a few genres like death metal, doom metal, death doom, even black metal. But I wouldn't necessarily put it under any of those. It's it, it kind of has its own thing going, and that's kind of how I see Great Sorrow. You put it under Death Doom because you don't really know what else to put it under. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. I totally get that with the Dance of December Souls. Well, how did that riff go? Man, I always forget how good that one is. And it's so yeah. nice. It has a pink album cover. <laughs> it looks like they're resting in uh, fluffy a fluffy yeah, cotton uh, candy <laughs> yeah but uh I, i've always loved uh in silence enshrined on that on that album with the uh that instrumental bit in the middle no that's a good song good album yeah it's a really weird Terrible one too. Cover. what i don't i'm not sure what year that comes out is that also 93 or is that a little bit later it than is 94 yeah. i'm not i'm really not even sure Oh, it's 93? Uh, according it's, to this, this December this 15th, especially. 93. So it was 93, but not by not by a whole lot. Oh, okay. So it was, it was uh, a, like, kind of officially Tail 92. End. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Tail but yeah, this... Yeah. Yeah, I, we've ta I talked about this before, like, maybe on the first episode when we covered uh, Mental Home. Kind of this doom, death doom getting getting into the realm of romantic and kind of getting away from uh you know kind of getting away from the slayer kind of getting away from the slaughter lord and i wouldn't necessarily say going into rock territory but almost kind of creating a whole new genre and and, and i feel like this 
is kind of an important distinction with um, some of these death doom bands uh, like this one, like uh, Maze of Doom and like uh, Catatonia and My Dying Bride and all that kind of stuff. Because mm. it really does seem like it, its own thing. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a very impressive thing, especially with what you were just talking about, Catatonia. It kind of reminds me of how fucking good they were. Yeah. No, it's uh... you know, it, it's I, kind I of. I, I feel that way about again a lot of Russian death metal. It just feels like it was conceived in a void. It just like it's the the influences that go into each band are are they they feel random. Yeah, they're all over the place. There's real. There's not really a. Um, I, I think somebody said in a in a metal archives review of this album they didn't talk too highly of it, but they said. Um, yeah, that I saw that. Russia, you saw that one, yeah. yeah the Maze of Boring like, Doom. The Maze of Boring Doom. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, but but that that same guy, like to his to his uh, defense a little bit, he says that um, the Russian death metal scene is kind of like, or the Russian metal scene in general, is kind of like the final frontier uh, when you're like just you know for discovering new things. It's mm -hmm. kind of like an untouched uh, landscape or something. Yeah. Oh, well, the, the the band that that one member was in Bestial Deform, even though we didn't record anything with them. I, I have their 94 album, Together We'll Destroy the World, um, that tacked on the 92 demo tracks. It's a pretty good album. It's a little it's a little wild. It's a little weird. And uh, that's kind of what I want to hear in uh, in, in Russian death metal. I, I, if I had to pick a comparison, I guess the closest that I would think of right off the top of my head is Deicide. But um no. Best of the form is uh they they've gone on for a while. I think like they've been around till like two thousand sixteen and released a few albums, but I've only heard that first one with the uh, with the demo tacked on. But uh worth checking out for sure. Yeah, I was looking into the members too, but nothing really I was I think I was looking more for a connection rather than like looking to what they're connected to. So yeah. I didn't really look into their bands, but that sounds interesting. Some DSI well, from the, Russia. The members that came later from In Great Sorrow, there's connections to a whole bunch of bands there. But at the time that uh, the first album was recorded, like there's the members were for the most part just In Great Sorrow. Yeah, I saw they had like a you know a full band, and I was making sure to look at what they were playing and. I didn't see any keyboards or anything there. It was just the two guitars, uh, bass, vocals, drums, you know. Yeah, I'm looking at the liner notes to see if they mention anything else, but yeah, no, that's it. And Words then next uh, T F Studio of Moscow, September fifteenth, nineteenth, ninety three. I was gonna say, um, even with, though there's very obviously like a keyboard or Mellotron or something at the beginning, some yeah. part of that. Unless it's yeah. A sample, but... Yeah, that sounds cool. It sounds like a video game. Yeah. Like maybe something from a Super Nintendo or like uh, Genesis, Sega Genesis or something. Donkey Kong. Talk, talk, <laughs> talk, yeah. talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> the Poison song. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was maybe gonna say. I call you on the telephone. What I what I do have uh, to say about like the Russian death metal scene? It kind of reminds me a bit of. The finished one, where nothing matches. Yeah, nothing. It's all just they don't really have their own sound except for hey, like nothing's lining up here. Yeah, except for maybe like the finished like uh, melancholy, but that that's like the only thing that kind of brings back all yeah, those no, bands the, together. The, the simple melodies that are just effective. Yeah, but um, another band that I was gonna compare this to. Um, Kind of hit me by surprise when I was listening to him. Um, Hearse from, uh, you know, uh, Pennsylvania, the, the GB, yeah, GBK affiliate band. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, not their album, but I was listening to the Stuff. the Dead Is Demos compilation, especially those first uh, songs off of uh, Plague and Disease, Holocaust, and Armageddon, like. Those sounded pretty close, especially the two songs. Like, those ones were, it sounded like they were 
either like listen to each other obviously they weren't or i don't know but they they sounded like they were doing the same shit like if in, you in what in what way like in, just the like guitars just the just the guitars and like the structures not so much proggy with uh hers because they're a little bit more uh like straight up thrash a little bit even like rock and roll type of shit that they're doing but um just like the melodies that they would do over their riffs it reminded me a lot of um great sorrow so that was like one that kind of popped out to me and then obviously bobby babylon sad yeah and yeah. and then i was trying to listen to um you know hibernoid obviously not the album because we know what that sounds like but i was Rock listening Rock. to yeah some of their uh demos and here and there it sounds like like this but overall i think it sounds like like slayer like slow down like weird slayer riffs and shit and has like girl vocals all over it too uh Is as like hibernoid demo yeah uh, that one's pretty good um but then i was able to you know stumble upon uh carry on a torrent that one's really fucking good uh from poland but it doesn't really sound like this at all it sounds more just like a good, just a good doom death band <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I feel like that's where we kind of go with some of these. It's like, uh, whatever genre this is, why not just talk about the genre? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know, there's there's so much to say, but we can always kind of come back, you know, we can snap back into it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, in that case, maybe we should listen to the sample because it's fucking sure, 10 sure. minutes long. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. And that's one of the shorter songs. In. Yeah. All right, well, uh, Fred, intro it while I get it all set up. Yeah, so we are listening to the first track from the album, uh, In the Abyss of Solitude. And it's the one that um, you'll hear those uh, almost false intros um, that throw you off to what you're actually going to expect to hear. Uh, but once it starts, it's just, it's killer death doom.
We're back from uh, that, the longest sample yet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 10 minutes. That's a change, yeah. About, about that, yeah. Oop, got to pause the album there. <laughs> it's still going into the next uh, synth intro. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, so, uh, uh, what are we going to say about that? Think? What? Well, what do you got to say about that, partner? Well, it wouldn't uh, be the same if I didn't say what I usually say. It say sucked. what you usually say. Yeah, <laughs> suck, dude. That's yeah, terrible. I, yeah, I prefer Fuck you. the. Why are you listening to this podcast? Fuck. You. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have we have some we have some good listeners. Both yep. of them. Like our four. <laughs> no, we got no. I believe we have four. <laughs> nice. And all four are uh, excellent, excellent dudes. 
Oh, oh yeah. Shout out to the four. The big four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big four. All right. So what the hell did we talk about there? Um, the the really thrashy beginning of the song and uh, just how freeform the entire thing is, especially after that opening riff. It, they kind of just, like you said, they're just jamming through the whole thing. And yep. that's, uh, that's really where I think the, the prog vibe comes off of because it just, it, it's still very much entrenched in death metal and doom, but uh, they're also just doing their own thing, just following whatever train of thought comes along, hopping on board and just seeing what stuff they get off at. Yeah, it's, it's seamless, all those changes. It seems like, you know, with all the guitar leads and solos that they have over this, it seems like it's a very meticulous, like, count of how many repetitions they're doing of each riff and each part. But at the same time, it feels like they're probably just jamming this shit out and doing it as much times as it, you know, as if until, it's like, it feels like a change is supposed to come, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because he was going over like full rock and roll, uh, freebird solo and shit. I don't even know how long that was, but you know, it was the perfect amount for him to, you know, the guitarist to do what they wanted to do and shit. Yeah, and those uh, those weird, almost Egyptian like Egyptian sci-fi yeah. kind of licks in there that uh, uh, that is really weird. Yeah, New Egypt. I feel, like a, New uh, Egypt. <laughs> I feel like a way that this kind of relates to something related to, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, Peaceville. The rock and roll, like, the, the parts where this kind of jam, they start jamming out and you get, like, these more rock and roll type solos. It reminded me of a band called The Blood Divine. You know, if you guys know who that is? No. I know the name, but I haven't heard them. It's some kind of strange super group. I forget who's in it. it. I think it's somebody from like Cradle of Filth and um Yeah, somebody else, man. How come I can't find Blood Divine? You do that all day. <laughs> yeah, so that one was uh Let's see, who the hell was it? So I guess it's an it's somebody from Extreme Noise Terror and Cradle of Filth and Anathema. The uh, Blood Divine. Interesting trio. Yeah, but I... I, I and this one's kind of weird because th- I'm not saying like either band influenced each other, but they have an album that comes out in 96. They're just doing really similar things, kind of with uh, a little bit of dissonant chording and like more rock and roll solo jamming kind of things uh, going into it, I guess. It's yeah. More of a gothic doom sort of thing then, I guess. Sort of. I mean, I, I, this thing lacks a little bit of the gothic. I, I kind of, even just listening to that song right now, I feel like all these songs are totally different from each other. But Oh, this no, sorry. One... I meant um, uh, Blood Divine is more of a gothic doom sort oh, of thing. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, the, uh, with, with this band, I didn't really notice it until, like, this is now, like, my fourth or fifth listen to this song. But um, I never realized exactly how epic sounding it was. Even with the, uh, oh, we were also talking about kind of how the lead guitars sound maybe out of tune. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I feel like that kind of also helps. And, like, th- this really does sound very amateurish because I don't, do they even have any demos, or is this the first thing that they did? I think no, they do. They, ha- they have one demo that's documented on uh, the archives, and then there's mention of two more demos prior to that that uh, don't seem to pop up anywhere. Yeah, it, it, it's this album in itself. I, I would just say for anybody who's interested in like weird death doom and just like '90s death doom in general, this thing really has like a total like identity on its own. It's very strange. The The entire thing is really weird. All the structures, all the cording, all the, the leads, and all the decisions that they make to, like, with, to, um, the decisions that they make to, to, to 
to go into next. Everything just seems very, very odd. Yeah, amateurish, uh, to, but to in me, a very it's a, cool it's a, way. It's a bit of a gem. It's uh, it's not something I can listen to every single day, but pulling it out every time I do, it's a, it's an absolute treat. Like it's, it's just all on its own. Yeah, you get to find something different every time. So that guy listened to it, yeah, the five times too. And, you know, I was hearing just over, there would be like this one heavy, you know, distorted chord. And then in that negative space between that coming back, you could just hear like this clean guitar go over too. And it, it's just really sick. They like really know how to fill the space. And like, yeah, every song's different on this release, but it has like that same like atmosphere but it, it doesn't seem like they're um you know it doesn't seem like they're trying to make like a like that consciously it's just like what's you know happening with the songs that they're doing and kind of like that it seems like they're just kind of jamming and shit yeah it, it does it see everything seems really organic even if things don't fit that's kind of their decision and uh you know at, at that point it really doesn't even matter so just in terms of uh, a little bit more of the tidbits about this band, uh, there's not a whole lot to garner about the early days online that I've been able to find, but uh, Metal Archives points out that they recorded a video for a song back in 92 that doesn't actually appear on any of their releases. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I saw that have, too. Yeah, I think I, I did see that as well. Uh, I wonder the, what the hell that was from. Right? The, the 92 demo... Uh, condemned cell uh, labels itself as brutal death metal under the uh, under the title. Now I haven't actually heard it. Uh, I have found it on YouTube, so I'm looking forward to actually listening to it and seeing if it uh, if it is a bit more uh, violent than uh, than the album, or if it's because uh, you know back in '92, brutal death metal as we know it now wasn't really a thing, right? It was just. I think death metal was, just death metal. I've, I've, I've heard uh, Dismember being described as brutal death metal when their first album came out. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was... Uh, it, it's just saying, like, oh, this is... Uh, it's heavy as balls. It's, it's heavy, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah. but not, not genre-wise, just it's brutal death metal. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I'm looking forward to, to scoping out their demo, and uh, I really should listen to their second album, too, the covers... The cover's cool. Kind of reminds me of the Mental Home album we re- we uh, we did a while yeah. back, and uh, that one's it still has the uh, still has the death metal. metal logo on it, so it might still be in the uh, in the same style. I'm wondering where the they vocals the, are very uh, different. I, I heard a little sound. bit of that. Oh yeah, is it uh, yeah. still like death metal vocals, or is it more clean stuff? No, no, no. The vocals are. Uh, I feel like it does the desultory thing by like bitterness, hmm. where like oh, it's so more the, more shouted. Lazy, yeah, lazy shouted vocals rather than a full-on death metal vocal. Oh, yeah, because doesn't sound, doesn't sound appealing. Yeah, because the vocals on this one are like perfect. Like, I, they just sound like fucking monstrous deep and um, like it. It seems like not even like a, a like a highlight of the the record. It's just like exactly where you need them, and you know, perfect uh, perfect sound for. Uh, you know, vocals over what they're playing and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just Russian death metal. Just hit me up with any of it. I love it. Yeah, I'll, I'll honestly, like, with you saying that and, and kind of touching on the music once again, I, I don't know that there is a highlight for this album. It all, all of it, all the, like, strange elements work together as one. Yeah. And kind of... Uh, just make this uh, a totally interesting thing and, and it's it's almost it's almost like unbelievable how how this this fucking album works with all the strange elements in it yeah no gimmicks it, no trends we, no no <laughs> no nothing really just just like a band it kind of just no mosh yeah, like no said, core no fun just a just a band jamming and you don't even have to have fun maybe that's the point Maybe don't have fun listening. Yeah, it's a Death Doom album. Just have a great sorrow. Huh? Yeah, just kind of <laughs> listen to this and uh, then kill yourself. Maybe that's um, make a change. Point. You know, I'm looking at the uh, the back of the album right now because I have the CD version. I never really 
paid close attention to the band photo here. You can't really see a whole lot of what they're wearing. One of them is wearing one of their own shirts. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Sick. the one guy uh, on the left is wearing a Paradise Lost shirt. So. Okay, so they, they, they do have that. They do know what's going on. Yeah, man. Somebody, know, somebody knows Paradise Lost. Somebody knows uh, Themselves. Peaceville. <laughs> I was going to say, um, like when I, was, when I was bringing up uh, Hearse, you know, their band photo on Metal Archives, he's wearing a Paradise Lost shirt too. So. Oh, that little Mexican guy? Yeah. So, I don't speaking even know of that Paradise that Lost, Mexican. you know the, uh, uh, the Gothic album cover? That kind of orangey uh, yeah. darkness? Mm -hmm. You know what that actually is? Uh, no, I don't. It's, it's like them actually, upside down, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a, like a detail of the band photo in, from inside the booklet, upside down, and a little blurred. <laughs> like, if you see like that little blue part at the bottom, that's actually the, the guy's leather collar. There's, I, I feel like there's no way to tell what that is. It just looks like, you know what it looks like what, when you're straight up looking at it? It looks like you're in, in a cave with like dim light. Yeah. It does. The only way I knew that is because I was looking through the booklet and uh, just happened to notice it. Like without that frame of reference, it's it's impossible to tell. But yeah, yeah, I, I fun fact. That. That's what the cover is. That's kind of amazing too, you know. I, that I, I have that much free time. No, 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 not that you have that much free time. <laughs> but um, well, that well, that too. But uh, <laughs> kind of the 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 peaceful thing, the death doom thing. Me and Fred were talking about this when I think Paul was in the bathroom or something. Okay. But, um, yeah, ooh, sometimes we go to the bathroom. <laughs> but this one is 91, and, man, Gothic is so, it's so different from all the death metal that's coming out. And what do they do? A pure death metal album, what, like one year before that? Mm -hmm. And then they, like, totally shift their sound into this, a whole different new genre. It's just yeah, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't take long. That's the Brits for you. You know, when it comes to, to Paradise Lost, that first album is, of all the Peaceville 3 recordings, that one is the most morbid sounding of all of them. It's the most, the most death metal, the most grimy, the dirtiest, the, yeah, that one's uh, the one that really does it for me. Their demos are fantastic too, just absolutely morbid death metal. Mm-hmm. I don't know if uh, this band has anything to do with anything. Oh, man. That's not even the name <laughs> of the band. But there was a Swedish band that is totally doing the Peaceville thing. And, like, not not just that, but, like, way more melancholic. I don't remember the name of the band. I think the album is called In Sadness. It's a demo. And you guys probably know who this band is. Uh, oh, Infernal Gates is the name of the band. Okay. I uh, can't say that I know this one. Oh, no? The, yeah, the very... I believe it's the very first demo that is uh, the one that's, like, kind of coming in at the same time, but also just fucking excellent. Look at that thing. It's like a fucking angel statue crying in sadness. <laughs> Do you remember... Uh, you guys haven't heard this one? No. No, it I don't is, think so. Oh, man. Listen to it. It is so excellent. It's... Very much uh, the Paradise Lost thing, but kind of kind of sadder. Damn. Okay. And if you're just looking for stuff that's really sad, uh, I would suggest that uh, Infernal Gates in sadness. <laughs> and I, I, I don't another know one if, uh, that I think kind of caught my ear in that style. And this one, I think this is a band that probably would have been part of the Peaceful Three or Four, I guess, if they had actually wound up signing to Peaceville. Um, but Enchantment, also from UK. Uh, they released yeah. only one album for a hell of a long time, 94, Dance the Marble Naked, which sounds like any of those three. Um, it, they're earlier albums, obviously. It's like more like Gothic and uh, uh, the Crestfallen EP, that sort of thing. Uh, and they went dormant for God knows how long, but actually just came out with a new album last year. I haven't heard it, but I've, I've heard it's pretty good. But yeah, Dance the Marble really Naked, that one. band... Enchantment definitely would have been part of that group if they had just uh, been in the same place at the same time as the other three, I think. Yeah, what year does this one come out? In 94? 94, yeah. 
in the UK. Yeah, it, it, this one's kind of weird because like I I actually know people who are into metal but not not like totally in depth. But this album keeps popping up for for them. I keep being I'm I people keep showing me this album that aren't really um in into death metal that much. I think I've talked about that with like some of my friends where they like infester but they really don't even know a whole lot of stuff i'm not exactly sure why these albums pop up for them and they like uh, resonates but that that happens to be one of them too weird well the, yeah uh, isn't that strange it, it got it got reissued uh, a few years ago um with the first demo as bonus tracks which i thought was pretty cool because okay. that one's a, a bit more straight up death doom but right. uh you know, it's uh, as usual. It's raw. It's more. Uh, it's meaner, but it's uh, it's a good sounding demo. So that's a nice little package that they uh, put out. Yeah, I, I feel like the the way that Instagram works now. I mean, Fred, you're probably um, familiar with some of this. Where like there's a bunch of metal meme pages of guys yeah. that are like making memes of things that people probably shouldn't even know of. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like bizarre it's like how old do you do you're like 17 and you're fucking uh, you're yeah, acting that, like this is a mainstream album yeah that ice one that you shared <laughs> that was funny <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it's like where are people finding these bands i mean i knew them when i was young but i was like immersed on fucking youtube yeah it wasn't these days. we're making memes <laughs> no well, no i mean there weren't funny. any I, there I just, weren't memes uh, back then Earlier today, I was on one of those accounts. Uh, it was like a black metal cringe posting or true. Okay, cringe I post. know that one. <laughs> true cringe shit posting. There it is. Yes, that was the one so, with the uh, ice thing. I sent Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, they put one out today that was. Um, I think it's a clip from McGruber walking into a bar looking, you know, cool as shit. Gruber? And the caption <laughs> says, "Me showing up to the bar in a mutilation shirt." Yeah, I saw that the necro schism so, shirt. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, overlay that <laughs> that's there. why I bring I'm them like, up. I, I bring up necro schism any opportunity I can. Like, if I could be at work and bring it up, it'd be really awkward, but I'd do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> We're Is talking about budgets, cooler? yeah, but necro schism. <laughs> Dude, I I don't know why I always do this too. Like, even with uh, friends of mine that I don't see very often. Uh, and they're like, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh, dude, I, I, I've i been listening to this. I've been listening to this. I always show people what I've been listening to lately. And uh, they don't give a shit. But uh, I, do, I do it anyways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> These aren't even yeah. metal people. These are just people that, like, they know I listen to metal. They go, oh, oh okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Hey, Fred, how's it going? I'm really excited. I just got a copy of the Cryptal Darkness demo. And they're like, cool. Well, yeah, cool. Oh, cool, man. I'm going to Swiss Chalet for lunch, so. <laughs> Sick, I'll bring my CD. <laughs> yeah, we'll listen, we'll listen to it on the way. Uh, no, I'll drive. You bring your Crypto Darkness CD, I'll bring my Crystal Darkness CD. <laughs> I'll bring my Eternal Darkness CD. Can yeah, I just say, go. though, that Crypto Darkness demo is fucking balls to the wall. It's great. Yeah, you know what I just thought of right now, since we're, since we're kind of on the Doom thing? Uh, what the flip was the name of that band? Wow, Heaven Wept. Do you know guys know that band? I uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't listened to them in a long time. I believe it's somebody from Gramble Isles Key. I think it's the keyboard player actually. From like the early stuff. Could not tell you. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Tom Phillips, ex Gramble Isles Key live. Yeah, they. Oh, I guess he was just a live, uh, live one. He was a live one. <clears throat> <laughs> You're gonna have to be quicker than that. But uh, Sorrow of the Angels is really good. The one with that like angel lady just kind of sitting there. And then go down a bit. I believe the album's called Vast Oceans Lacrimose. There's a really long, or I guess it's not that long. Instrumental, the last track. Uh, that one's just fucking excellent. That's that's kind of where um the last track of the mist of twilight uh the the ending part of where mist of twilight comes in hmm. took a lot of influence from that i just thought it was a really cool sounding thing because it's almost like um it's almost like uh nevermore mixed with 
funeral doom. It's pretty interesting stuff. So this is really a tangent, just because you mentioned the long instrumental track. Uh, you guys heard the new Immortal album, War Against All? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. No. I didn't know they had a new album. So, well, I mean, I say they, it's, it's just Demon Eyes at this point, but, you know. Oh, is it? I, okay, so, so uh, Abbott isn't part of it anymore. No, no, that, that whole thing kind of blew up. So they... Uh, oh, it, it is shall... just Demon Eyes. Yeah, the last, okay. like, this album and the last album were just Demon Eyes. Um, huh. Does it sound like Immortal still? Because I've seen it, the album cover, but I haven't... It uh... sounds more like Immortal than they have in a while. Like, it... Um, this one on the last one, Northern Chaos Gods, um, like the very first track from Northern Chaos Gods, um, when I put it into the CD player for the first time, I'm like, holy fuck, this sounds like a pure Holocaust riff. Really? And yeah. And, and it doesn't stand that through the whole album. Like they kind of uh, run through the entire discography in terms of sound. Like you'll hear some at the heart of winter here, here, uh, uh, pure Holocaust there, a bit of everything, but for the most part, it sounds more like Immortal than they did on, like, All Shall Fall and stuff like that. So, I, I was pretty happy with Northern Chaos Gods. War Against All, I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but my impressions were actually really good. Um, but the really cool thing in there is they have a seven minute long song in there uh, called Nord Nordlandir, Nord Nordlandir, or something like that. Um, and it's a seven minute long instrumental that has a lot of like heavy metal influence. It, it sounded almost like an instrumental man of war song. Yeah, Im and, Immortal always has the uh well not maybe not always, but later in their career they have the uh like stadium rock kind of thing going on. Yeah. And uh with with, with those albums you're talking about, I've never actually heard them. I've always seen them around, but the last one it, it's funny, it's actually the first immortal album that i heard and the last one is uh sons of northern darkness that was the first and or that was the first and last album that i ever heard i actually really like that album it's really fucking good yeah that one's great i, I they'll, they'll never top pure holocaust for me because that album just smokes beginning to end but um you know i'm not really mad at any other albums except maybe all shall fall that was not bad, but forgettable. Anger rides with the ones that know no fear. <laughs> Do the sons. Man, that song was just so cool. But you know, I haven't spent a ton of time with War Against All, but I, I like I like it. But Northern Chaos Gods is a really good album, especially if anything. Just listen to that first track, the the title song. Uh, it the entire way through just feels like. Like the the production tone is uh, kind of like sharp and thin at the same time, but uh, the th that first track just feels like it could have been like an outtake of Pure Holocaust. Yeah, That's I'll, sick. I'll check I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, it, it's it, the whole album's good. It's all, it doesn't all sound like that, but that first track I'm just like, okay, okay, you got my attention. I'm listening now. <laughs> I, I feel right like I got him. Yeah, I feel like guys that got into black metal at the same time as uh, probably me and Paul did around, jeez, I, I, I want it for... Like for, 90? For, no, no, kidding. no. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even born yet, dude. God, I want to Yeah, I know. I want to say around 2006 is where I kind of knew what black metal was. And that, for, for people our age, like, millennial uh people in the late 20s it's like immortal was a, a huge part of uh all, all of our journeys into it yeah I, I got into black metal like fairly late in my teens probably when i was like 16 or so that were around like 2000 um and, and yeah no immortal is still a huge part for me like that album kind of uh, even today, when if you ask me about Norwegian black metal, that one's going to be my top three easily. Like yeah, because Immortals, Immortal, the guys that kind of took it to the next level, they're the guys that kind of um, <clears throat> almost mainstreamed it uh, a bit. You know what I mean? They they definitely um, those music videos, huh? Yeah, the music videos. <laughs> yeah, like they kind of, 
and, and like this, this will sound weird, but they kind of gave it a friendly face, almost. Like, no, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the booklet to add the Heart of Winter, and I don't know how true the story is, uh, but apparently the what I heard was the photos in there were just supposed to be outtakes of just them goofing around, but somehow they got published in the album instead of the actual photos. And that's <laughs> kind of how them being kind of like goofy but still serious band kind of started but uh, I think that hurt them more than anything because then their image kind of came first before the music and then people didn't take the things they had done prior to that quite as seriously anymore which is too bad because like those first three albums are seminal for Norwegian black metal but what always got me though is how much of a change from diabolical full moon mysticism to pure holocaust like diabolical is just straight up bathory worship and, and then pure holocaust is just like lightning in a bottle like it's, yeah it's just fucking second wave right there yeah like i i don't know like i've heard that the um the recording is a little sped up um which given its speed wouldn't hugely surprised me because um, the bath was on drums on that one right and I don't think he was primarily a drummer in... uh, well I don't know he did he did drum for um, the hell's that band called Det Hidensk Folk oh yeah yeah he drummed for them too so I don't know I don't know how well versed he is in drums overall, but either way, I love the drums on Pure Holocaust. Like it just yeah, it sounds like relentless. horses galloping. Yeah, honky doodly. Yeah, that that's a that one's a great fucking album. But um, I was gonna say because we we brought up uh, basically like they're you know a band coming from uh, you know '90s and shit, coming out with new shit and actually kind of rips and shit, but during uh, us listening to the song, you brought up uh, like Morbid Saint and shit. <laughs> I think we were talking about like Cadaver. They got like new new albums here and uh, we're talking about thrash bands that should just maybe stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said it sounds like uh, <laughs> Boomer shit. <laughs> the Morbid Saint. Yeah, I wasn't too thrilled with what I heard. Like, I I'll have to revisit it, but uh, my first impressions were were disappointing. And, and you know, it it's hard to live up to an album that came out, like, what, 30 years ago? <laughs> but, I mean, if Possessed can do it with Revelations of Oblivion, other bands can too, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, Possessed really didn't do a bad job. I, I heard that the, the latest Possessed, it's It's, it's fantastic. It's, cool. it it's really like, cool. It, it sounds like they just picked up right where they left off after seven uh, seven churches. Yeah, yeah, and, and with a lot of bands, it seems like they don't pick up. They kind of want to just do what they think is. I, I don't even know what the mindset is, but it seems like they play stuff that could be contemporary in like two thousand three to now, or and you could just be like, you <laughs> yeah. could just be like, they're oh, trying to catch up or what. <laughs> they're not trying to catch yeah they're either trying to catch up or they're just trying to do something innocuous where like oh we have a new album but it's it doesn't sound like our old stuff and it's uh boring and it's lame yeah. <laughs> that's not their mindset long break but like that's that a, is, is risky it always it's always risky but uh, i don't i don't i don't know man i feel like even if you were to create like recreate what you did once like 30 years ago you could do it you just have to kind of understand like not just the production but also kind of like what 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 you're doing and what's i feel like honestly i feel like production is a big part of it a lot of yeah. bands go way too far with their production when they come back and oh, you yeah. don't need that that's not what people want nobody wants that yeah, like you know what else? You know what else? Nobody wants cringy boomer lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what? What kind? Well, for example, what kind of cringy boomer lyrics do you mean? Uh hang on. There was, I think it was the newest Razor album that had some pretty terrible lyrics, and 
I, I hate saying that because I love Razor, but the last album didn't do much for me, and there was some. See, that's okay, something we so have to be. Here, that's look, something we actually have to be aware of now. Tracks like <laughs> this one's called Jabroni, and I, I know it's a wrestling reference, but I uh, off my meds, a bitter pill, first rate hate. And I'm like, oh, that's so corny. First rate hate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hang on, let's, let's see the lyrics to Jabroni. Yeah. We got ourselves a tough guy here who thinks he's number one that won't be allowed to stand when all is said and done. I detect disrespect as I invade the ring. It's time for retribution and the oh, fight no. it always brings. They're not wrestling, <laughs> are they? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, Those sound the, like the end could, part. They... He just says, it's like Jabroni and then like, oh my God. Jabroni, you're just a punk. Jabroni, and now you're sunk. Jabroni, I'm here, and that's the bad news. Jabroni, I always win. Jabroni, when I step in. It keeps going like this. What happened and, like, to people hating posers? Because <laughs> that, that, that's what that seems like. It's like they, they ran out of like a target to talk about and shit. <laughs> yeah, the, now, and now, their dead, just, now their target is just die like, again. <laughs> now their target is just like young punks. Hey, you think you're tough, punk? I'm here at the bar every day. I ain't seen you here before. <laughs> that's what it seems like. And that's not a very good... Uh, I don't think that's a very good subject for metal. Yeah, it's like a bad skull meme. It's like... It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, if Affliction made music. The Affliction t-shirts made music. That's what you get. <laughs> Meet me in the ring. Not the... <laughs> Meet me in the ring, jabroni. Hey, are you running your mouth, jabroni? <laughs> so that's kind of yeah. what I remember of the uh, new Morbid Saint song. It gave me that kind of vibe, and I was not uh, not thrilled with it. That that Cadaver album that's going to be coming out, the singles are pretty good. I was surprised from what I was hearing. And um, it sounded like kind of... Dan was saying uh, Screaming Machines from Carbonize and um, Screaming Machines Virus and um, from Norway and um, yeah it was actually pretty surprising definitely Virus yeah gotta go back and listen to uh, their first releases because I only did a little only did a little bit and it was it was great yeah the only one I remember from Cadaver was uh, mostly just hallucinating anxiety yeah Really? Not even the second album? That one's great. No, you know what? I, I never really uh, gave that one a listen. I always thought it was a Death Doom thing, but I guess it had more to do with, um, like, experimental uh, project stuff. I, I never really noticed. I, I just never really gave it a listen. Yeah, it has some uh, it has some Doom in it, but I wouldn't say it's... Uh, I wouldn't identify it as a Death Doom album. Right. Um, I was just thinking, like, now that you're talking about, uh, kind of, uh, like, lyrical themes, the, you know what has really great lyrics? Fucking, um, Whiplash, Power and Pain. They're kind of cheesy, but they're kind of genius. I, you know what? I don't even think I have ever read the lyrics. <laughs> you know that one? I, I know the album, but I haven't read the lyrics. That's not one of your favorites? It, you know what? I haven't spent enough time with it to uh, to put it into favorite territory. Well, like the, a lot, the one, the a one, lot of... for some reason, the one album I always compare that one to, then I always uh, pick the other one over, uh, mm -hmm. is the Overthrow album, Within Suffering. Uh, I don't know if I know what that is. Uh, it's Canadian, um, and it's like a. Kind of a uh, death thrash sort of deal. Not maybe not quite as high. Okay, well well you have a Saint, guy but, uh, you have a guy in pain. That's something similar. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the album covers, they're both in pain. But the uh, whiplash, he's in pain because a robot hand is squeezing his fucking head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that album cover does look ridiculous. But um I don't know. This one has always been a favorite of mine, even since like uh, high school thrash days. I always said to people like 
when it comes to this is like so stupid to say but when it comes to like whether you're a poser or not it's like do you know whiplash do you know morbid saint you're good if you know whiplash and morbid saint you're good that was always my uh kind of rule or takeaway i guess can you name three songs from the band you're whose shirt you're wearing i'm not wearing a shirt <laughs> <laughs> No, I never. I don't think I ever did that. I remember people would do that to me, though. Yeah, people. I, I, need, yes, people need hobbies. So, well, somebody said that to me. Yeah, actually, school. listening to the music. And it was it was somebody. <laughs> it was like some little Mexican guy who didn't know anything. You know what? I think he was trying to fuck with me because I asked him if he knew. He was wearing a Misfit shirt, and I think I might have actually asked him. I was like, "Hey, you know any songs from the Misfits?" And he goes, "Oh, you know any song from the Romans?" Roman. I was wearing a Ramones t shirt, by the way. <laughs> the Romans. Yeah, so I that might have been the one and only time I did that. That was in like shit, sixth grade or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, I remember hear about that. I remember one time at a concert. This must have been in like 2006 ish, I want to say. Um, I was wearing a Hellhammer shirt and it had that. Um, who you know that like heaven and gram with the skull and the spears the uh satanic rites one uh i'm blanking on the cover of satanic rites hang on no not quite um it's i mean this will kind of spoil the ending of the story but uh the one on the uh, on the back of apocalyptic raids uh yes okay so i'm wearing a black shirt has hellhammer across the top in red and it has that heptagram with the skull on it uh and this older guy goes comes up to me and says is that shirt a bootleg i'm like uh, i don't know i got it from this store but I, I liked it so i bought it and he goes hmm, well that uh that uh, heptagram was only ever for celtic frost so it's probably a bootleg and <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like twice my age i go Actually, my first pressed bonsai edition of Apocalyptic Raids has this on the back, so no, you're wrong. <laughs> he just mumbles and walks nerd away. alert. <laughs> <laughs> right, fuck off. <laughs> Fucking nerd off. Fuck you, nerd. <laughs> actually, um, <laughs> um, um, actually, um, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, actually, we got to get into our last, uh, our last thoughts about this album. This uh. Death <gasps> Death Doom uh, <laughs> talk is uh, taking a little long. <laughs> so, just, uh, uh, just Dan, take it away. Force for Death Doom. Yep. Okay. Uh, for anybody out there, we were just talking about uh, Whiplash. Dude, look up the lyrics for Stage Dive and especially look up the lyrics for fucking Warmonger. You guys remember that? The lyrics for. Okay, this is a homework for you two now. Uh, lyrics for Warmonger. Listen to the song and read the lyrics. You, you, you're gonna be rocking out of your friggin' socks, man. It's gonna get that classical music right out your butt. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> blow that classical music right out your butt. <laughs> Hello, it's a bass. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what happened to the blood sucking incubus from Magadeth? <laughs> okay. Anyone, uh, anyone want to switch seats? <laughs> yeah, let's yeah change places now. The wink, the wink, the wink. Uh, well, I, I know we're we're supposed to be talking about this one out, but I wanted to bring up one last point that I can, didn't get to talk about. It's uh, kind of stupid, but uh, we were talking about Babylon Sad for like a second, and hmm. you know how they had that fuck. It, don't start with me. But you know, how they, <laughs> <laughs> you know how they have they had the one album, and this drummer. From fucking uh, Babylon Sad, he has kind of a weird career. He drummed for fucking Crocus in like the 90s. And he also drummed for fucking Mekong Delta and Coroner. Ugh. A guy named Peter Hass. I just thought that was kind of interesting. He had a weird career. Crocus and Babylon Sad. <laughs> and a band called Ain't Dead Yet. Ain't Dead Yet? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, about fucking Maze of Doom. It's like only slightly boring, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It is. It, like it, everyone, it really go does. listen to it now. It's only slightly boring in a good way. No, no, no. But that's a good thing. You need some. You need Death Doom's out. Al- Death Doom albums like that. All the Death Doom albums everybody's gonna listen to. That's kind of the uh, go to. It is slightly boring, but fucking listen to it, dude. It's got a really cool atmosphere. It really reminds me a lot of Castle in that way, where it it just feels like jamming. It just feels like flowing. And I think um, you're definitely going to hear a lot of uh, tech thrash stuff in there. Just really slow down. Along with, uh, you know, a tiny little sprinkling of uh, gothic doom. But it's Russian. And uh, fuck, what else is there to say, dude? It, it's it's actually pretty dank. You know, Fred wanted us to, to f- yell at each other over it. But I like it. I think it's definitely a fucking outlier. And it's definitely something that should be like... Uh, in the history of uh, Death Doom, you know, coming alongside of Anathema and uh, My Dying Bride, it's just, it's just right there, boy. Yeah, we got to pick yeah, something different. Take. That'll make us yell at each other next time. Yo, Fred, yeah, yeah. don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but... maybe Fred don't miss, dude. <laughs> no, that uh, that sums it up well. I, I, to me, it's the the fact that it was Russian that really got me onto this because everybody's there's... Russian. Yep. There's, Hi, everybody's so, <laughs> there's so little consistency to that scene that you never really know what you're going to get and this didn't disappoint it uh it's totally out of left field like there's elements that you know and recognize but they're put together weirdly and there's uh, it, it, like the the cover art works says it all right like it's 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 death metal but it's it's fucking weird it, it's weird yeah go listen to it that's I, th- I don't think any description we give on here is going to be quite accurate enough to give you a good picture of it without uh, actually giving it a spin. Well, actually, uh... actually, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, actually, Fred's it's right. A mul- Russian <laughs> melodic death tune, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Fred, Fred's right. Like we we can't really do it justice with our words for like what this shit is. Um, it's a Death Doom album that is. Uh, I didn't. I didn't find it boring at all. Uh, the drums are no slouch. They're doing something constantly. Both boring guitars. In a good way. <laughs> yeah, born in a good way. Seriously, and... I'm serious about that. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> 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 